What's up guys, the Pikawu here bringing you another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle. This one is a 5th generation battle, like my last one, except this is a singles battle. And I am using the same team, and I'm going to try to avoid using really um, commonly used Pokemon in my battles. Such as like Latios, Natore, um, Conqueror, you know, those type of Pokemon, because uh, a lot of people are actually sick of seeing those type of Pokemon so um yeah um both my opponent and I are actually using some lesser used Pokemon so I hope you enjoy this battle so yeah if you guys enjoy definitely leave a comment and um give this video a thumbs up so enjoy the battle okay guys so this is a black and white battle against a guy who goes by the name Kit and unfortunately he does not have a YouTube account so I can't put a channel in the description below but anyways this was a really nice battle we we're both using some lesser used Pokemon um, no like really commonly used Pokemon such as Notore or Rayunculus so um, yeah anyways I'm gonna lead off with Lucario he's gonna lead off with a Steelix but he goes for the flame flamethrower which reveals that he is indeed a Zorark and that's gonna be real nice because I am able to get a close combat off and because he is a life orb set and not a focus sash set I will be able to Oko it now he goes into an infernape and since extreme speed is plus two priority I will be able to outspeed his mock punch and that's gonna get some good damage onto that infernape and I kinda wanted to keep my Lucario for later but I mean it wasn't really a big deal leaving it there to die anyways I'm uh, predicting the switch out I'm gonna go for the substitute as he brings in a cacturn really nice play because I can just go for the focus punch and since that's super effective, and since Cacturn has garbage defenses, and since Azumarill has pure power and has beast attack, that's going to easily Oko him. Except I tricked you because he has the Focus Sash, and um, yeah, he's going to live the hit, and I'm pretty sure Cacturn has a higher base speed, and I don't carry um, speed EVs at all. And since Azumarill doesn't appreciate taking a energy ball to the face, I decide to go into Scyther to quad resist the grass type move. Now I want to scout if he has a sucker punch, so I decide to go for the swords dance, and that was perfect because it revealed that he had swords or it revealed that he had the sucker punch, and I got a free swords dance up. Now he goes into his real Steelix here, and I was predicting him to not um, go for the stone edge straight away. But he actually does go for it straight away, and that really sucks since it's four times super effective, and he gets a crit. Not sure if that mattered. Probably not. I mean, Scyther is pretty bulky. Base 80 defenses with the Evil Light, and since um, Stone Edge isn't a stab, so um, I'm not sure if I could live. Probably, I probably couldn't have lived. I'll probably put a calculation um, on my Pikachu. Anyways, I go into Sazendora, since Sazendora is a beast Pokemon, and in hindsight, I should have just went for the Brick Break so I could break his uh, sturdy ability and because I didn't he is able to go for the Custap explosion get some damage off before um, taking himself down and Custap um, Barry is actually illegal because you actually can't get it in black and white yet it's not officially released but that's really no big deal um, I'm fine with that anyways I'm predicting his U-turn I go into Heatran I want to save the Sazendora for later because it's one of my most important sweepers on my team now I want to bait him in using the close combat because I carry the Chopleberry and not many people carry the Chopleberry on the Heatran because most carry the Balloon and I actually prefer the Chopleberry because there's um a lot of fighting type Pokemon in the OU metagames such as uh, Conqueror, um, Infernape, a lot of Conjondo, a lot of fighting type Pokemon I can just take down with a Heatran after he hits me with a weakened fighting type move. Anyways, he goes into a, uh, what is this, a Flygon, and he's going to go for the Outrage, and that's going to take down my Heatran. And I decide to go into a Zoomerol because it's my next bulkiest Pokemon, and I can take it down with a Ice Punch. And yeah, that's really nice because Scarf Flygons are always a threat against my team because pretty much any scarfer is a threat because they are really fast and can hit hard now he goes into a war turtle and um that kind of sucks but uh i'm just gonna go for the waterfall just get some damage before i die but i get the flinch and that sucks for him because after leftovers recovery i can take two more surfs and um, I decided to go for the Focus Punch just for the lulls of it in case he goes for like Toxic or something, I don't know. And then I went for the Ice Punch. I didn't really want to, him to get another flinch because that would have just been really annoying for him. I would have felt really bad. But um, 
Yeah, that would have been funny if I went for the ice punch, feeling bad for the flinch, and I got the freeze. But um, anyways, the hacks um kind of makes up for itself because I missed the seed flare. That really sucked. And then he has the protect, so I will be able to fall asleep due to the yawn. Now I have to switch out because I really don't want to. I know I have two Pokemon left, so it's bound that I'm gonna win because since. War Turtles is his last Pokemon, so I just switch into Sazendora just to fodder him, so the match doesn't take really long. Um, I could have, I really wanted to, just uh, stayed in and just waited out the turns of sleeping, but I was lazy. So now I'm gonna go into my Shaman, finish him off finally with a Seed Flare. That's gonna miss again, and he's just gonna use the same tactic. That really sucked because uh, my plan for making the shorter battle shorter actually failed. You know. Ah, uh, so that was really obnoxious, missing two sea flares in a row, but that was quite lulzy. Anyways, yeah, now the battle is kind of stalling. He's just going to go for the surf, and that's not going to do much at all. Now, I'm still asleep, and he's still going to go for the surf, and I'm going to wake up. Uh, hopefully, I will be able to hit a seed flare, and he goes for the protect here just to protect. I don't know why, and... um. It's quite annoying that he is going to go for the protect because he's actually stalling out my PP for Seed Flare. I'm running out of a lot. I'm running out of my PP, but I went for the Seed Flare there. It doesn't KO, and that really sucks because this is a modest Shaman with like 350 uh, special attack. No, I don't know how much it's special attack, but it has a good amount of special attack. Um, it doesn't have 350. That's not right. Anyways, it has like probably like 270 I don't know anyways it's a modest nature one and I didn't KO I don't want to miss my seed flare so I go for the hidden power fire and it doesn't KO at that point which was ridiculous and now he's just gonna toxic stall me with protect and I actually might lose this so um yeah that was a really bad play but I really thought the hidden power fire was gonna take him down because he was such a, at a low slither of health and um, I'm kicking myself for that, and that was so stupid. Now he's going to go for the Protect again. He gets a second Protect. That really sucks. And um, Toxic is actually um, taking its toll on my Shaman right now, and I can live one more Toxic. And if he, if he hits the Protect here, he would have won. But luckily for me, his third Protect fails, and I am able to take him down. So that was a really close battle. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the battle. The end was pretty epic. So um, yeah, guys, definitely um, stay tuned for more black and white as well as fourth generation battles. I hope you enjoy this battle. Peace out, guys. Thank <laughs> you.